John here guys and today we're talking about why you should spend more time tuning your thumbs than you do tuning the flight controller on your quad. Now in 2021 there is an explosion in popularity surrounding tuning thanks to Chris Rosser, thanks to UAV Tech, thanks to Barwell and a lot of other great resources out there for all of us but what a lot of these videos don't tell you as you're tuning and tuning your quad you need to spend three four five ten times as much time as you do tuning your flight controller tuning your thumbs now why do i say that i have been a long time proponent of the fact that you should leave your quad mostly default for the first few hundred hours now why do i say that that's because a lot of people get very confused about tuning a lot of new pilots go try to fly they crash immediately and they believe that they're crashing because of a bad tune that's not the case you're crashing because of low skill level your tune no matter how well it's tuned is not going to replace stick time it's not going to replace how to Fly. Now, a lot of people will say, look, I've flown in the simulator for 10 hours and I've flown in real life for five hours and it's not clicking. It's not flying right. There's something wrong with my tune. No, there's something wrong with your stick time. Uh, think about if you replace that sentence with I've spent 10 hours learning how to drive and I'm not comfortable on the freeway. No, that's exactly how ridiculous that statement sounds. You need to spend a lot of time. So as you are updating your tune, if you are varying from default, my favorite thing to do is go to UAB Tech's preset page. I'll leave the link in the description below and tune, put his starting point on there. I'm using his starting point for race preset and I've only made a few deviations. Now I tend to fly nasty props. I bang them up and I keep flying. So I'm actually, putting my filter settings a little bit less aggressively. He recommends 1.5, I'm only doing 1.3, so a little bit more conservative. Now, every time you make an adjustment, you need to come out and fly, and fly in a more relaxed setting than you normally do. Now, normally, I like to race on gates, but if you are not a racer, if you're a freestyle bando basher, don't take your new tune and go out and fly a bando come to a nice open space like this. I'm actually in a parking lot today. Normally I'd be on grass, but we had a lot of rain recently. Don't mind what you normally would do. Just cough in your goddamn buck like everybody else. So I'm practicing doing a lot of the maneuvers with a little bit more space. I'm not going high, I'm not going far. I'm just getting my muscle memory built back up because I don't care how good your new tune feels, it's gonna feel foreign to you on the sticks. And whenever you have to make a split second correction, your brain is gonna go to that muscle memory and your muscle memory is going to be tuned to whatever your tune was previous. So as you're adjusting your tunes, as you're adjusting your rates, as you're learning as we all always are, I've been flying almost six years and I'm still learning almost every time I go out. Now, as you are adjusting your tuning, have a goal in mind, guys. Have a goal in mind whenever you're doing it. Don't just say, I want my quad to fly better. I want it to be more responsive. That's too generic. I noticed in my flying, whenever I'm doing a lot of the very sharp, actually the very shallow curves. I'm doing a lot of micro adjustments. That means that my uh, rates that I'm not using are not quite in tune with what my fingers thinks they should be doing. If your quad is doing a lot of micro adjusting, your thumbs are adjusting too much, then something's not right. So my goal is to be able to do those maneuvers more smoothly, more predictably. And so as I'm adjusting, as I'm tuning my rates, I want to go out and fly until I'm used to it. Now, I'm not going to wait till race day to do that. I'm going to do it here in a wide open space. I'm going to get as many packs just doing that specific type of maneuver until I get it lined up. I'm going to go and do unpredictably little sharp little 180 turns around every tree and every post in this whole parking lot. Why? Because I want to be able to adjust when I can see the line predictably and I want to be able to adjust quickly 
if I get up and I'm about to crash so that way I can avoid that crash. And the only way to do that again is stick time, guys. Stick time. That's the only way. Don't forget to get your stick time in, guys. It's more important than eating your vegetables. I already know from experience, if I change my radio, guys, I know that I need 30 to 50 packs before I build that muscle memory back up. So don't forget as you tune, whenever you tune, you may be adjusting your muscle memory even more than that. So allow yourself the packs. Um, don't keep changing anything. Don't change 10 things at once. Try to isolate a few different things. If you're changing PIDs one day, don't change your rates at the same time and vice versa. So I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna get 10, 15, 20 packs, just flying sort of circular racing type maneuvers on here. I'm trying to get used to how this corners as opposed to what I have been flying for the past year. Now, um, I do fly a lot of stuff for the channel, a lot of stuff as you always see. I make about 10 videos a month, but I only change my racing setups about once per year. I will come out with a racing setup and I'll fly that for the whole entire year because if you make too many changes, it messes with your muscle memory. Same thing should happen with your PIDs and rates. I don't recommend constantly changing them. I'm only gonna look at changing them once a year. So this is my new PID rate setup. I'm not gonna look at it again until the beginning of next year. Now, since I am a racer, this is kind of when the racing season starts. Ideally, I would get my hardware setup and my tuning setup adjusted in the January, February timeframe. That gives me a good three to four months to fly on it, get that new muscle memory so that by the time racing season starts, I'm already set. I'm not making any changes to my setup at all. Just a few tips out there for you guys. I know everyone is on this new tuning train that we have. So thanks to Chris Roster, thanks to UAV Tech, thanks to Barwell and all the other guys putting out information. But just a few tips. Don't forget to get the stick time along with the tuning time. You need to spend 10, 20, 30 percent or 300 percent more time on the sticks as you do on the bench when you're tuning. Thanks, guys.